Aloha, and welcome to part two of our video series. This time on how to actually use the cannabis butter in a recipe, we're gonna make some edibles, some cookies. So I've taken the frozen butter out of the freezer, and I've taken some little wedge-shaped pieces out, and I've set them in the bowl. My goal is to get approximately a half a cup or one stick of butter, so I'm fairly close with that. Cookie recipes, I don't always measure exactly, but approximations are good. Next, I want to soften that butter up to room temperature so that I can whip it with some sugars and eggs and some vanilla. These are basically the Toll House chocolate chip cookie recipe cut in half. So you'll see I'm going to add some oatmeal, uncooked oatmeal, just some raw oats actually, and some peanut butter. I'm going to add some white chocolate chips as well as chocolate chips. I like cinnamon, a little ginger, vanilla, sugar, some dark brown sugar if you have it, or golden brown sugar as well, and some baking powder are all the basic ingredients. And we'll just add them all together along with the egg and whip up some cookies. Once the butter has reached a nice room temperature, I'm gonna add in one cup of sugar, white sugar, and a half a cup of brown sugar. I like to start creaming that butter and the sugars together. I'm gonna add an egg, one teaspoon of vanilla and about a half a cup to three quarters of a cup of smooth peanut butter next as well. Adds a little nice flavor and some sweetness. There we go. Basically, we're going to add all of the wet ingredients together and blend all those as smoothly as we can in preparation for the dry ingredients. If you have a hand mixer, you can use it. I use a spoon. However you want to mix it all together, that's entirely up to you. Critical piece is to get it nice and creamy and smooth. All right, after a couple of minutes, you get a nice creamy brown bowl of butter. And now we're gonna add some flour and oatmeal and start to add in the rest of the dry ingredients. Continue mixing as always. I'm gonna add a big full cup, rounded cup of flour. I'll probably add a little bit more flour as well and a slightly less, a light cup, shall we say, of oats. These are organic oats. And I'm gonna use just about a cup of chocolate chips and, oops, and a cup of white chips, semi-sweet for the chocolate, just the regular white. If you have butterscotch chips, throw those in. Have some nuts, chop them up, throw those in too. This is a recipe that loves a little variety with every turn. Raisins, yes, absolutely. About a half teaspoon of uh, baking powder and maybe a quarter teaspoon or so of salt. I like to get those going a little bit, mixing in, getting the dry and then the wet ingredients to combine before I start to add in some of my chocolate chips, nuts, and other additions that you might want to add. I'm going to add about a light cup of the white chips and about the same amount of chocolate chips. Good. Half a bag or so, and keep stirring all of that together. Now, if it's a little dry, I like to add a little milk. If it's a little wet, I add a little more flour. You want a just nice, firm cookie dough consistency. Mix it. I want about a half of a teaspoon. I will shape it with my fingers a little bit as I put it onto the baking sheet. I didn't. I didn't grease the baking sheet or anything. There's enough butter to take care of that. Then the cookies won't really expand much larger than what you see them there. As we'll show you after they finish baking. Just continue to spoon and form and place on your baking sheet. One half teaspoon. And here we are. Baking time, 12 minutes. You don't want to overbake them. As you can see, they didn't expand very much. About the same size they were when we put them in. A little flatter. We want to next put them on a baked cookie sheet, cooling board of some kind. If you have cookie racks, you can use that. I've just got a wooden cutting board, that'll work. And I want to just cool them a little while. While one batch cools, I can get the dough out of the refrigerator and get ready to make a new batch. Just gonna use a spatula, get the cookies out, right over to the cutting board. Just continue that process till all the cookies are in a place where they can cool. While those cookies cool, I'm gonna let the pan cool just a little bit also before I add the next batch of cookies. 
The cookie dough has cooled a little in the refrigerator, but that's okay with the compensation of the extra heat in the oven and the extra heat in the pan. You'll still get a good consistent cookie at about 12 minutes in baking time. All right, we've used up about another third of the batter, cookie dough, and we filled up another tray, ready to put those in the oven for another 12 minutes for the second batch. Now at this point, you've got some decisions you can make, some options. You can keep this dough in the refrigerator for two to three days if you want before you make your next batch. You could freeze it long term if you wanted to, but I will probably keep it in till tomorrow. Or when this batch gets out, keep on going, make a third and final batch, get it all the cookies done. Then you can just freeze them individually if you want to. Cookies are done and cooling. Once they've cooled completely, I'm going to put them in some baggies maybe a dozen cookies or so to a bag and put them in the freezer. They'll last almost indefinitely that way. When you're ready to eat them, let's talk a little bit about dosing. Again, one cookie is a good dose for most people. It will take about 40 minutes for that dose to kick in and last for three to four hours. Very powerful doses in this one little edible. For those with experience and uh, heavy tolerance for cannabis, you can certainly have more than one. I like two or three sometimes in an afternoon, spread out over several hours. Makes for a great activity, going to the movies or a concert or somewhere where you're going to be active and need a buzz that lasts a long time. These cookies will do the trick. Enjoy them. Aloha.